As Earth turns on its axis and the constellations appear to move across the heavens, there's more to the night sky than the stars, the planets, and the moon. There are visitors that can shine brightly for weeks, nomads whose unpredictability makes them all the more exotic. We know them as comets. How are comets formed? We must turn to the earliest solar system. At the hot center, heavier elements condensed, like metals and rocky silicates. The inner planets are rich in such elements, but farther out, where it's cold, through the gas giants and the Kuiper belt, lighter elements condensed. They formed ices of methane, water, and ammonia. And still farther out, a shell of icy bodies called the Oort cloud envelops the solar system. It's from Oort and Kuiper that comets fall. Dislodged, perhaps, by the gravitational twitch of a neighboring star, a comet is drawn inwards by the tug of the sun. In the unaccustomed warmth, as ancient ices vaporize, they stream off as a great tail. Rounding the sun, the comet is now captured in a vast elliptical orbit. Time-lapse of a comet shows a tail fluorescing blue because of the ultraviolet of sunlight. Comets grow two tails. The blue is gas, the yellow, dust. The gas tail can disconnect if there's a gust in the solar wind. And then reattach. The tails disappear as a comet returns to the freezing outer reaches. Do the tails always point away from the sun? Yes. The blue gas tail is blown by the solar wind, electrically charged particles that stream from the sun. The tail can stretch a hundred million kilometers from the comet's head. The broader and shorter dust tail is pushed outwards by the radiation pressure of sunlight. Dust from the tail litters the wake of a comet. When intersected by Earth, Grains streak into the upper atmosphere and burn up. We see them as showers of meteors or shooting stars. <laughs>